Hey there, and welcome to the College Investor Audio Show. We are truly honored that you are joining us today. As we take a look at this topic, it's the battle of the acronyms SSA versus SSI versus SSDI. The key differences between them and the impact it has on the FAFSA. That is our topic today. Very interesting, and we'll get to it in just a second, but I wanted to let you know that you can always hit subscribe on this podcast. That way you are always up to date on new content that we post, and we do post new content all the time. Stuff that's relevant for you in your journey through money and just winning at money overall. You can also find us all over social media. Just search for The College Investor and you'll find us. All right, let's go. Let's get to it. So Social Security, SS, versus Supplemental Security Income, or SSI, and then Social Security Disability Benefits, or SSDI, are, of course, three federal benefit programs that can provide income to Americans who just aren't able to work. SS, SSI, and SDI are all managed by the Social Security Administration, SSA. Each of these programs, however, have different purposes and eligibility requirements. However, when it comes to taxes and financial aid, it can be confusing to understand how all this stuff works. For example, do you need to include SSDI benefits received on the FAFSA? FAFSA, I should say. And also, how exactly do these programs work and how do they play into your tax bill? So today, we'll look at each one and their impact on your paycheck, taxes, and FAFSA. First, what is Social Security? So the Social Security, or SS tax, is part of a group of payroll taxes mandated by FICA, the Federal Insurance Contributions Act. One component is the Social Security tax, or the Old Age Survivors and Disability Insurance. And the other component is the Medicare tax. These FICA taxes fund your retirement and disability benefits. Kinda. When people refer to Social Security, or SS, they are typically referring to Social Security retirement benefits. And a quick note, these are not going to be enough to retire on. So always, always, always invest along with your Social Security. Okay, well, there's a lot more at thecollegeinvestor.com if you want to dive in deeper on that topic. But let's stick to the topic here. So let's talk about how Social Security or SSA contributions do actually affect your taxes. The Social Security tax rate is 6.2% for the employee, and it's the same for the employer for a total of 12.4%. If you're self-employed, you have to pay the full 12.4%. I do. I hate it. But anyway, for this reason, hiring contractors is an advantage for companies since they don't have to pay Social Security taxes or even any payroll processing overhead. The amount paid by the Social Security tax reduces your taxable income. For example, if you make $100,000, 6200 is paid in Social Security taxes, leaving 93800 to be taxed by federal and state entities. Social Security taxes are applicable to the first $168,600 of wages for 2024. The 168600 limit is called the wage base. The Medicare tax is split the same way, 1.45% paid by the employee, and the same for the employer for a total of 2.9%. This means your combined FICA tax rate is 7.65%. The Social Security portion of these taxes max out at $10,423.20 for 2024. I love how exact these numbers are. How Social Security benefits affect your taxes. Now let's dive into this real quick. So once you start receiving these benefits, depending on your total income and filing status, those payments may be taxable. Those filing single with a combined income under $25,000 will not have their SS benefits taxed. Incomes between $25,000 and $34,000 will have benefits taxed at 50%. For incomes over $44,000, benefits will be taxed at 85%. While not a Social Security tax, the additional Medicare tax, AMT, is applicable to those who earn more than $200,000. AMT is taxed at a rate of 0.9%. So here's how Social Security benefits affect FAFSA. Yeah, Social Security benefits do impact the FAFSA. You will need to report all taxable Social Security benefits received, which just falls into your taxable income on your FAFSA. You do not report untaxed Social Security benefits. Social Security benefits max out at 85% taxable. 
But what about Social Security Survivor Benefits and FAFSA? Social Security Survivor Benefits that are non-taxable are not reported on the FAFSA. That's good. So in the rare case that the survivor benefits are taxable due to the recipient's adjusted gross income, maybe, the taxable portion, then that would be reported on the FAFSA. Now let's move on to the Supplemental Security Income, or SSI, eligibility requirements. To be eligible for SSI, you generally must be 65 or older and have a disability. Children are also eligible to receive SSI. SSI is paid monthly through Medicaid. The amount is determined by NEED, or means-tested program. SSI is intended for those who have low income and very little in assets. Generally, if the Social Security Administration finds that the value of all your personal property and assets exceeds $2,000 for an individual or $3,000 for a couple, not counting your car and home, you're not going to qualify for SSI. So Supplemental Security Income SSI Benefit Limits. Let's take a look at this, too. SSI amounts vary by person, of course, and they do have a, monks, a maximum monthly amount set by the SSA. At this point, those amounts are $783 for an eligible individual, $1,175 for an eligible individual with an eligible spouse, $392 for an essential person, which is such a weird term. You are all, you're essential, okay? You are, all of you, every, every person is essential. Anywho, SSI benefits increase in tandem with cost of living increases, which is nice. So, is SSI reported on the FAFSA? SSI payments are not taxable income, and no, they are not reported on the FAFSA. The last thing we'll talk about, what is Social Security Disability Benefits, or SSDI? SSDI is another disability program. A lot of people lump the two together and just simply call them Social Security Disability Benefits. But the main difference between them lies in their eligibility requirements. Where SSI is needs-based, SSDI is determined from your work credits. Also, SSI is funded from general fund taxes, while SSDI is funded from the Medicare portion of the Social Security Trust Fund. The idea behind SSDI is to provide an income to disabled people who paid into the Social Security program but aren't yet old enough to begin receiving their SS benefits. So that's basically while SSI requires recipients to be 65 or older, SSDI recipients must be under the age of 65. So recipients of SSDI contribute to the Social Security Trust Fund while they work. Their contributions are in the form of FICA Social Security taxes, which we mentioned earlier. Having enough work credits is a requirement for SSDI qualification. Due to income restraints, the majority of people who receive SSDI do not pay any federal income tax on the money they receive. In most case, states don't tax SSDI benefits whatsoever. So what are these work credits you talk about? Work credits are based on earnings. In 2024, each $1,730 converts to one work credit. The maximum of credits that you can earn in 2024 is four. $6,920 in earnings. These, there are two tests that determine how much an SSDI you'll receive. These are the recent work test and the duration of work test. So without straying too far into the weeds here, the more years you've worked, the more credits you'll need. But if you haven't earned enough in work credits to qualify for SSDI, you still might qualify for SSI. Is SSDI reported on the FAFSA? Um, only on the, they're only reported on the FAFSA if they're taxable to the recipient. Most beneficiaries who receive SSDI are income constrained, so the benefits are not taxable. So in that case, no, not going to be reported on the FAFSA. In the rare case that the benefits are taxable, only the taxable amount is reported on the FAFSA, which won't be much at all. And here are some final thoughts. So to recap this whole thing, now that everything is clear as mud, both Social Security and SSDI are funded through FICA taxes and are paid via the Social Security Trust Fund. You can begin taking your Social Security retirement benefits at age 62. But if you become disabled before you reach retirement age, you may qualify for SSDI benefits. 
So SSI is also a disability benefit, but with Supplemental Security Income, SSI, you'll need to demonstrate financial need to qualify, and you'll typically need to be like 65 or older. Each of these programs can help relieve your financial burden when you can't work. But your maximum benefits will also be limited by your need or how much you've paid in. So to further protect your income during a short or long period of disability, you may want to consider shopping for disability insurance from a site like Policy Genius or even Breeze. And you can check out our complete guide to disability insurance as well at thecollegeinvestor.com. And with the instability of government programs, <laughs> you should also open a retirement account and save and invest as if you'll need to fully fund your retirement yourself. If you do end up actually receiving Social Security benefits, it's just going to be extra money that you can use however you want to. Have fun with it, because you've already saved enough with investing and saving by yourself. So you can read our full guide to saving for retirement, as well as resources, um, disability insurance like Policy Genius, Breeze, the complete guide to all of this stuff, all of it, and so much more, is at thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks again for stopping by today, and we'll talk to you again real soon.